What's going on, y'all? It's your boy, Cool Colas here, and you are now tuning into a new episode of the Pro Black Blurred Kingdom Podcast. On today's episode, I'm going to be talking about what I believe is the best black comic TV show to ever come out. And here are some of the comic shows that are going to be in the running for me. Blue Cage, Raising Dion, Black Lightning, Batwoman, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And you know what? We're going to go ahead. We're going to throw Cloak and Dagger in there. Originally, I wasn't going to say Cloak and Dagger, but we're going to throw that in there as well, too. So the reason why I consider these shows black TV shows is because they have a central character or their main character is black or it's or the whole show itself, including the main character is black centric. Let's be honest. There's only a handful of black comic TV shows that even exist, unfortunately, but I want to take some time to put some special attention on these shows. I want to talk about what was good about them what was bad about them, and the whole nine. The shows that I'm covering today, of course, are kind of all over the spectrum as far as where they fall in brand-wise. Some of them are Marvel, some of them are DC, and then there's also a show that's in neither, right? We also need to think about what makes a black comic TV show the best black comic TV show. The reason why I try to make this specification is because the qualifications that I believe that it would take for a black comic TV show to be the best of its kind is different than the qualifications that I would expect from a white comic TV show or a non-black comic TV show. For me, I have to think about a few different things. Number one. The authenticity of the show's blackness factor. So in other words, does it have a blackness feel to it? Like, do you feel like this would happen in an environment that has mostly black people or black people who only hang around black people? Like, you kind of get the point of what I mean by that. Number two, is the show itself actually a good show? So, you know, ranking it the same way that you would rank it as far as storytelling, character development, acting and all these other things like you would for a white show or a non-black show. Also, how do you feel about the messages? Like, are there a lot of agendas? Is that an issue? Like when we're thinking about the way that the show is, the way the story is being told. And let's be honest here, y'all. Like, y'all know that in a lot of these comic shows, pretty much almost every black comic or every black show actually that exists, there is a weird agenda that is thrown in there. It's always something. It's like, it, it, it's almost like a, it's like a, it's like a given. You have to expect that that's going to be there because of the way that stories are being told and the way that these shows are being produced. Like that, you know, when there's a, a, a either a black character or it's a black show that something else is going to be thrown in there. And it is most definitely going to like concern that black person. So in other words, um, I'm going to give you a really quick example. Like if you throw a black character in the show, you put them with a character who is not black or you have a character in the show and this is a big one. And a lot of people are like, are, are upset about this, but I just have to say it. Or you have a black character and you just make them LGBT and black as well. You can't just make them heterosexual and black. You know, you, to me, I feel like there's always some type of agenda that's thrown into these shows. And that doesn't mean that I feel like it's, it's something that shouldn't happen in every show. I'm just saying it to say that it ha it's, it's almost like it's a given no matter what black show that you watch. It's, and it, it's, uh, it's a really unnecessary. So I guess I say that to say when we're looking at the way that we're ranking these black shows, that is something that we definitely need to consider, like the amount of it or like the lack of it and what that means for the scope of how the show ran. So since I brought it up and I just kind of just randomly added it in there, let's talk about Cloak and Dagger first. Cloak and Dagger to me was a great show. It's a great show that just did not finish, right? 
It was interesting because they told two stories. They told the story of Ty, and they told the story of Tandy, and they talked about how their powers were kind of intertwining to a certain extent. Now, they changed up the story a bit because originally the white girl Tandy, who was also known as Dagger, she was supposed to be this privileged little white girl, right? And then Ty was supposed to be this black kid, like this young black man who was living in a bad area and he was essentially cloak. But they swapped the two. Now he was a, a, a black man who was living in a privileged area, or a black boy, I guess, who was living in a privileged area, and a white girl who basically was on some like low some low key uh like poor white trash type stuff. Not not necessarily poor white trash, but she was she was pretty poor. And so they were basically telling the, the, the story of them two. I thought that it was a really good show. I just wish they would have finished it. I kind of knew where they were going. I think the idea was they were going to put them together romantically. And if, if you ever look in interviews, it kind of sounds like that's the direction that, um, that they were going. Because I think even like Ty, the guy, the actor who played Ty, he even like mentioned something like that. Because I think somebody in the interview asked him, you know, um, where do you see this story going or something like that? Like, do you see like a romance t uh, between Ty and Tandy? And then I think he said something like, you know, um, uh, well, no, not right now. But, you know, th there possibly could be something in the future. He said something like that. All I'm saying is that that was clearly where the show was going, especially when they were on the bus at the very end. Again, the, the character development was good. The acting was good. The storytelling in the first season was very good. In the second season, it was good, but it was a little confusing. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, so I thought that overall it was it, it was it definitely was a different type of feel i consider it a black show because of just the nature of ty and the all the characters that surrounded him and whatnot so you know the, the, so the positive things i would say again are just that it, it just had good story the, it, the, the development in season one especially was really good the acting was good even from like the the um the non-black uh, act actors and actresses that was pretty good i thought that the powers his powers were cool and the way that they displayed them and you know when they would go into their little separate worlds when they would have their uh their power where they would use their powers that was pretty cool too so overall it was it was interesting from that perspective and they kind of added a little bit of a, um another a, a thing i found interesting they added a a, a bit of a black Haitian Wakan type of thing going on with you know the love interest and the love interest is on and stuff like that they kind of added a little like twist in there with that which I thought was pretty cool and obviously this story took place in New Orleans so that also like had its own you know thing to it as well too now let's move on to the next show that I kind of wanted to discuss here. So when it comes to raising Dion, there were a few things that I liked in this. Now, I watched both season one and season two. Season one was solid. It had a great storyline, great character development, and again, it was setting its own lane. Nothing was like it. It didn't feel like it was fitting into this DC mode or this Marvel mode. It really felt like its own thing, and it wasn't trying to be anything but its own thing. I also like this concept of having this black superhero child. So having this um, this child who has these incredible powers and he's being raised by this mother who is watching him as he's having his powers come into fruition. So I think that that whole concept is interesting versus us always having either like a uh, either a, a young man, young woman, or a grown ass man, grown ass woman who has these powers and has all, has their own scenario going on. I thought that it was a different twist to kind of see the child be the one who has the powers and to see the way that him having powers affects like all the people around him. So I thought that was very interesting. The characters they definitely I, I think like add a lot of um, interesting elements to the story, especially characters like Pat and people like that. I think that that that's really cool. Um, I also, uh, just, just like the fact that it doesn't try the show itself. It doesn't try to be anything that it's not. It doesn't try to be too serious and it also isn't like too silly as well too. It's a good med like median ground. And I think that's what makes it, you know, very interesting. It just seems like very, uh, it seems very realistic for a show that would have a child as like the, 
the central protagonist. Now, let's talk a little bit about Batwoman. Batwoman, uh, like, and we're talking specifically about season two and season three, had some really great and interesting writing. It put a very important black stamp in the Batman world that wasn't originally there before. So now you got a black Batwoman. You have a black Joker now in season three, which was, <laughs> that was dope. And the character development of these characters was very uh was very good you know before the show in my opinion was relying a lot on the character alice to carry it because she has this very um she she kind of reminds you of like a joker but she's not really a joker because she's not to me alice is not really crazy alice is just very angry so she has a very like uh eccentric way of expressing herself um, you know, as, you know, just as the villain or just as a character in general, because everything she's been through. So, you know, she's like I said, she's, I wouldn't call her like crazy, crazy. Like she's a little off, but, but she's mostly eccentric and angry. And I think that she was carrying the show for a while, but ever since season two, I feel like it picked up and it feels like the other characters are kind of picking up the slack now. And if you think about the main cast, most of the main cast is black. And I thought that was very cool that that, that we that they've gotten to that point where they're telling, uh, like, in, in my opinion, a black story now. And it's it's really come a long way. So I think that a, a, a you know a story like Batwoman should get its props for the way that it's transformed itself into this now black show that we're witnessing before our very eyes. For Falcon and the Winter Soldier, it had a lot of depth. And it had a very intriguing plot. I like the idea that we that we explored this post world without Captain America in this series. Now again, we're exploring a, a lot of like the the aftermath after the whole Thanos thing, um, you know, from the Marvel movies, of course, and the other shows. But this one specifically, they talked about the aftermath of the way that Sam and others handled the situation where Captain America went to go be with his girl uh, back in time. I like the journey and the struggle that Sam had, actually. I like the idea of them exploring the realism and the approach to having a black now black recognized superhero in this world and some of the struggles that he faces with getting the same type of notoriety and the same type of respect in a lot of instances even than that of Steve Rogers. Like I think one thing that was interesting is uh they had like a, a scene where he was trying to get a loan at a bank and despite the fact that people knew that he was Falcon, they knew the fact that he saved the world and all this other stuff, they weren't really trying to, like, you know, give him anything for real. And so it's interesting to see the, the lack of respect that he still got, despite the fact that, he like, dude saved the world and he did all this other stuff. It just kind of just, it, it, it just added that realistic element to that whole thing. That realistic element as far as the way it compares to the way it would be in, in real life. And uh, it had a darker tone, a darker and, again, just very realistic tone to the way that it was, the, the show was, uh, was done. Now, let's talk a little bit about Black Lightning and the things that I saw and liked. Black Lightning was good season one through three. Some people don't think that three was good. I actually enjoyed three because it brought something different. Either way, I liked one through three. It was a very consistent show. It was consistently good. It was a consistently the same amount of good even, I would say. The characters that were portrayed were portrayed by actors who really embodied the characters very well. I enjoyed the heroes. I enjoyed the anti-heroes. I enjoyed the villains. And the reason why I have to point that out is because I think that a lot of times when we watch some of these stories that we see the villain will be the standout person or the hero will be the standout or the anti-hero usually is the vi villain and the anti-hero usually they're the standout in a lot of these shows because they bring something different um to the story other than that kind of white bread oh i'm going to save the day type of shit you know so 
there was one character I will say that I didn't really care for in the way that they wrote her. And, um, her name was like Lady Eve, if you ever watched it. And it, I'll save that for another video. But but anyway, I was just I was just trying to say that I feel like they did a good job overall with the way that they wrote all their heroes, their anti heroes, and their villains. And this is me saying this from the perspective of looking at season one through three. I love their main antagonist, Tobias Will was awesome now they overused the brother don't get me wrong they overused him like they had this dude like be a villain like in season one he was the villain in season two he was the villain in season four say season three he like the villain was grave digger but see but they they just didn't really have that um they they just continued to use him a lot regardless he was a great focal point of the show a great main antagonist the actor he did a great job with the character, and he almost kind of get, had like these likable villain vibes to him. There was something about him that was just likable, although he was a terrible human being. The other thing I liked about Black Lightning is that it had a ton of dope old school music, like hip, like that were in the that was in the hip hop and R and B type of community, and they played it a lot throughout the show and throughout different seasons of the show. I thought that was really cool, and it gave it its own feel. And it made it made you feel like you were watching, you know, again, an authentically black show. Now, let's talk about some of the things that I saw in Luke Cage. Luke Cage had a very solid main villain season one in Cottonmouth. Very solid actor casting two. Mah Mahershala Ali, I think that's how you say his name, who was who played Cottonmouth. He was perfect for the role. Let's be real. He was perfect. But let's also be real, too. There are other characters that had perfect casting as well. I personally believe that Mike Coulter as Luke Cage was perfect casting. I also believe that Simone Missick's fine ass as, as Misty Knight was also perfect casting as well too. So I just think that overall they did a good job of finding the right people for certain roles. Now some people, they had a problem with um, Alfred Woodrow playing Black Mariah. I necessarily don't feel the same way. Some people feel like she she should have been a big woman, you know. Some people probably felt like uh, somebody like Loretta uh, Devine or somebody like that probably should have been not Loretta Devine. Um, I'm sorry, Vi Viola Davis probably would have been a better person for that role. I don't necessarily agree. I thought that Alfre Woodrow was fine, and. I think that, like, overall, they just did a good job with that, with the casting as far as the people who they had playing certain roles. The storylines were good for the most part. The end of season one was a little shaky for me. And they also had this uh, black exploitation esque type of vibe in certain ways. Like, for example, the music in the very beginning and the music in the very end and some of these other things that they would do here and there. It kind of made you feel like you were watching like some type of live action TV show from back in the day. But it also kind of kept that uh, that feel from like an era that we exist in right now. Now, let's talk about the premise of where what I felt was the best show and why that was. And then let's also kind of dive a little bit into where there were some faults in some of these other shows. To me, out of all of them, I personally felt like Luke Cage was the best and most authentic of all of the black shows. And that was for multiple reasons. Number one, it was unapologetic. They were unapologetic in their vernacular. They were unapologetic in the way that they expressed their blackness. And the show didn't try to pull any punches in any of those departments. Now, I'll give you an example of what I mean by they, it was unapologetic in its vernacular. I love that moment when Mariah was running from uh, from Bushmaster because remember Bushmaster was chasing her ass the whole damn season, like whole damn season two. And so I remember she was like, I don't know who this this Bush nigga is or whoever is chasing me. Or she said something like that. And so when she called him a Bush nigga, I was like, now 
y'all know y'all know good and well that in real life that that's how she probably would have said it like that's really probably how she probably would have expressed herself there was something very authentic about that now some some people have a problem with that they're like i don't like the use of the word nigga like them using the word nigga so much in that show but i think that that's really the authentic way it would have played out it was for me it was more about like the authenticity of the way that you know it appeared and the way that the characters interacted with one another and the way that they spoke and again this was very realistic and or the most realistic that i would see from a comic show that was trying to be as close to our real life as possible i love the way that they had um mahershala ali play cottonmouth i felt like he was perfect for the role i felt like he did a great job embodying this character that virtually nobody really knew about for real like that and he was so good i almost am upset with the show for them not keeping him him in longer because if you remember correctly around i think it was episode seven of season one they killed him prematurely and they killed him in the middle of while he was having like this kind of face turn if you think about it because at that time he was having an argument with with mariah and he was talking about how he could have made something of himself and how, uh, you know, she like was 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 uh, she enjoyed like the little what happened between her and, and the uncle and all this other stuff. So really Cottonmouth was putting her on blast and it was clear that he was about to change his ways. It was very, very clear that that's what was going on. And she killed him out of anger and frustration and threw him off of the top of the building. Like I felt like that was premature because I'm like, dang, I said, are we about to see an anti-hero Cottonmouth? Oh, boy. Like. Like, is that where this is? That's what this is turning into? Because I felt like it was going in that direction with just with the way that they wrote him. But instead, at the end of that season, what did we get? We got Diamondback. And Diamondback to me was not a good villain whatsoever. I like the actor. I'm not, I'm not trying to say anything was wrong with the actor. I just thought that that character just was a total downgrade from what we had just gotten Cottonmouth. And he was really, if we're being honest, a black exploitation character that was on crack. And I just think that didn't resonate. But regardless, the imprint that Cottonmouth had on our minds and on the way that we felt about the show was pretty big. Let's be honest with you. It, it, it's it, let's let's be honest here. It it was pretty big. So the other thing I've got to say about the Diamondback character, since we're on subject of it, is I don't like the whole. I, I don't like how how. Uh, I don't like how hard they were trying to make him a black exploitation, uh, sorry, black exploitation character as well too. They had him saying stuff like "bye Felicia" and shit like that, and um, and when he was trying to get rid of Luke with those bullets, like I just felt like, I felt like for me, that was a little bit much. I just wanted to make that point real quick. But again, other than that, I thought the show was was beautifully written, well done. Um, I thought that it just had like the tone that you know we would hope for in, in, in a in a black show i also like the symbolic idea of luke or as other people know him from the comics as power man i like the idea of what his powers were about as well too think about it he had impenetrable skin it was as if his melanin was an impenetrable force that he could use as a shield to protect him and let's be real y'all that made him more badass Think about the idea of melanin's value in American society. Melanin is used in stuff like computer chips. Melanin, at least a synthetic version of it, is used in sunscreen. And white people put it on their skin when they're in the sun so that they can tan properly so it basically doesn't burn them to hell. Melanin is a very powerful force. And this show took the liberty to show how powerful it really was even for somebody like luke cage i love the symbolism behind that it, that that really really stuck with me and i think that that might have been the reason why i kind of um i, I kind of said that this show right here is the best because it's it's authentically black the storytelling was was pat was like just it was good enough i'll say that it was great there were issues obviously but it was it was good enough for me to say you know what the, they did a good job writing this and even though like there were a few agendas, I've seen a lot more on some of these other shows. And I'm going to get into that here. Black Lightning was good, but there were quite a few problems. There were way too many 
agendas that were flying around. Like for example, Gamby was a white savior. Every time they had problems, what did the what did the uh, the Pierce family do? They always ran to Gamby, to Uncle Gamby. Uncle Gamby's gonna save him. He's gonna get some type of technology thing flowing. He's gonna get the little like black nerd to start typing up shit on the computer, and all of a sudden their problems are gonna um, be not so bad. So he was just the white savior of, of of the of the show. Lynn was a bitch. Let's be real. Y'all know it. And I know it too, so let's just call it like it is. Lynn was a bitch. Lynn was a fucking bitch. She could never be feminine enough to just have a solid relationship with Jefferson. It was always dysfunctional. She was always annoying. She was always whiny. She was always just making a fuss. She was the most annoying character in the show. And they didn't have to make her like that. They made so so they did two things here. They made this woman, this black woman, not be allowed to be a soft character. So now she's non-feminine. And they emasculated this black man in Jefferson Pierce, who was a heterosexual black man. Really, they did three things. I'm sorry, three things. The third thing that they did was they made they created a dysfunctional black relationship because they had them living in the same home. They were married, unmarried. Like, we really didn't know what their relationship status was most of the time. They were always arguing. They were always fighting. And it just seemed like there was a lot of, like, ups and downs, a lot of highs and lows. And it shouldn't have had to be that crazy. Black thuggishness was at an all-time high. They had that going rampant in the show. I mean, you had think about all the thugs you had. You had Tobias, you had Lala, you had the whole 100, you had uh, what's his name, Painkiller. You had all these people who was thugging in this show. Like that was just a common thing. The the heterosexual black male outside of Jefferson who was getting emasculated because of Lynn's ass were thugs. And, and, if, and if they weren't one of those two, guess what they were? They were a little nerd typing away, like helping Uncle Gamby. So, the, other than that, the other thing that I saw that was a serious trope in Black Lightning was that there was a lot of trauma sauce. There was a lot of uh, the Black person is being attacked by the police like because think about jefferson i think it was i think it was either the first or second episode was uh was was basically pulled over by the police and he was arrested and all this other stuff and um there was just uh like a lot of that type of stuff going on and like he had to use his powers in order to get out the situation i don't know i just i feel like that happened a lot quite a bit in uh in black lightning as well also, season four was pretty freaking terrible. Like, that was a disastrous, like, series finale. Now, mind you, a show like Luke Cage, I do wish that they would have ended it off and we could have saw, like, where everybody went and what happened from there. I do wish that I could have seen that, but I'm just going to be totally, totally, totally honest with you. Like, I would have been very disappointed if Luke Cage season three, if that was the end, and it was written the way that season four was written a black lightning because that was a disaster now it sounds like i'm going hard on black lightning right now so I, I don't want i don't want this to be a deterrent i did really like the show but i just had to point out the reasons why i didn't pick it as the best show i also felt like there was some issues with black authenticity i felt like Whereas in Luke Cage, they were willing to say nigga. They were willing to kind of like push the cuff on a lot of things, a lot of issues and stuff like that. Black Lightning felt like they still were trying to put on the kid gloves in some ways. Like, I'm going to give you an example. When Tobias would speak with contempt for the people in Friedland, he would often refer to them as Negroes, not niggas. I think that a real villain, a real thug, a real like gangster criminal would have just straight up said niggas. Now... I do want to say that I, maybe they were going for this idea of having a refined, calm, crazy type of villain in Tobias. There's always that possibility, but I just felt like they could have pulled that like authentic, authenticity trigger and saying niggas, I think would have been part of that because really now I think about, it, I don't even remember Lala even using that word and Lala was not a refined villain. Lala was, he was pretty hood. Let's be real. He was. So that's why I say, like, I, I think that the authenticity wasn't there the way I wanted it to. There were too many agendas, too. And 
I think that season four could have been stronger. Outside of that, Black Lightning had great writing, great character development. It was easy to get attached to the characters, even if they were villains, even if they were anti-heroes. I liked Tobias. I liked Jefferson. I liked Lala. I liked a lot of those characters. So I will say that. The reason why Batwoman didn't get the best is very obvious. It just, first of all, was not a good show at first. Season one, it was not a good show. And more important, it was not a black show. It was not a black show because originally the actress who played um, uh, the Batwoman was Ruby Rose. And she played this character named Kate Kane. But Kate Kane stopped being like the central lead of the show. So, in other words, it was not a black show. And it was a it was a non-black show that ended up becoming a black show. Now, I say this with a grain of salt, and here's why. I'm throwing it in the category as a black show because Javicia Leslie is playing Ryan Wilder, who is the black lead. But if I'm being honest with you, I think this is supposed to really be an LGBT show. And that's one of my other gripes. I count it as a black show because there's a lead, and that's part of my criteria. But ultimately... The idea there is that they want to promote LGBTism because they had uh, Kate be LGBT, who was the white Batwoman, and now the black Batwoman, who is Ryan Wilder, played by Javicia Leslie, is LGBT as well, too. What I really think, and, and, and I, I'm just going to be totally honest with you all here, the reason why I think that this was done was because around the time when that whole George Floyd riot shit was going on, I think that uh, the the CW or whoever the white writers were for this network, what they said was it would be a great idea for us to get black attention. And the way that we can do that is by saying that we are for diversity. So we're going to take this actress who originally was not in the show, make her the lead, make her black, keep her LGBT, of course, and have her replace Ruby Rose. And the reason why is because Ruby Rose at that time was leaving. She was leaving um, uh, Batwoman because of some issues that she had on set. But the point that I'm trying to make is that when they, they announced that Javicia Leslie was going to be playing Ryan Wilder, who was going to be the new lead as Batwoman. What it did was it solidified it as a show that would have a black lead, but it also like was somewhat of a facade. This really is an LGBT show, but they want to make it seem like they are diverse and that they're for the promotion of black people. So that's why I think they threw her in there all of a sudden because they, they didn't really have to, because if I remember correctly, I don't remember Ryan Wilder being black. And if she was black, I don't remember her being like this big time bat woman per se. So I think that for me, that's kind of what, what kind of frustrated me there was that it was obviously a diversity ploy. They want to, they want others to believe that they are woke and they wanted to do that to adhere to black attention. And so that what that does is that helps them. That's selfish. They don't necessarily care about us because if they did, then we wouldn't have to wait for something like the George Floyd thing to happen for them to put in, you know, a black a black character as their lead. They would have just done that from the get go. Because think about how they even treated Black Lightning when Black Lightning came on. Um, they, it was kind of an afterthought and they made it separate from the, from the rest of the shows in the Arrowverse. And originally I just thought, oh, they're trying to make it special. It's like, no, they downplayed it. They gave the show less episodes. They spent less time on the show. The show had the least amount of seasons. And even when they did the final crossover where Oliver Queen had died, Jefferson Pierce was treated like he basically, he wasn't even really all that important. And now that Oliver, um, Queen show, like the, uh, the Arrow show is gone. They're trying to lean on like Jefferson to like, kind of make the Arrowverse keep keep running so you know that that's a whole nother topic for a whole nother day i just wanted to make that point that i think that the whole thing was a diversity ploy and that's why i can't give it the respect that it deserves to say that it was the best black show also too i don't think it was authentically black i don't think it was authentically black because one it doesn't have that feel and two it focused again more on lg on being lgbt throughout the show like most of the characters are lgbt in the show most now 
season three changed that up a little bit they have more like straight characters and stuff like that but it was that there were definitely like an, an, an overabundance of like gay characters or, like in the show and so I think that that was like their main thing they're caping for like for LGBTism they weren't caping for you know being uh, like you know being black and outside of having like a mostly black cast that being like uh, uh, Ryan Wilder that being Sophie and that being uh, uh, Luke uh, Luke Fox that that's that's their way of basically saying hey guess what we got black people in here look at them so yeah, think about it though there's there's not even like a real like heterosexual black relationship going on there's no black man and black woman relationship that's even going on in that show because Luke's two like possible love interests one being this the uh the little pale white girl i can't think of her name who was like the daughter of one of the villains that was one of his love interests from season two and then in season three he seemed like he had a little thing for mary and mary's asian so again there's no th there's no heterosexual black man and woman relationship then you had uh you had like alice who was interested in ocean now ocean was i think he's black he looks like he's he could be mixed or something but um he had a relationship with Alice, but Alice is white, so that that makes a, that that's a relationship, that's an interracial relationship, that's a white girl and a black man. So again, there's no there there's no like even authentic black relationship between a black man and a black woman in this show. So I can't really call it authentic in that way. Again, the writing was great in Batwoman, especially in season two and season three. The writing was absolutely phenomenal, but people just didn't pay attention to it anymore because of the fact of how how average and mediocre season one was. Average to mediocre, I would say. I said average and mediocre like they're the same thing and they're not. Average to mediocre it was. Um Personally, I will say I do like Ryan and Sophie together, like just because like their personality seem like they, you know, just connect well with each other. But I really wish they just would have put Ryan Wilder with a with a black man, like a black male love interest. I, I really feel like they could have they could have done that differently because then it wouldn't give me the uh, belief that what they were trying to do was advocate for being LGBT because that's what that's just how it looks. It just looks like it's a. It's an LGBT show that's disguising itself as black, and I'm only putting it on this list because Ryan Wilder was the lead. So then there was there's uh, Raising Dion. Raising Dion season two, to me, wasn't that great. It kind of fell off from season one. I didn't also like that they took the dad out um, from the family dynamic. Uh, I felt like they tried to promote this, uh, this strong, single, black female role. Like the strong, single, black female who was raising this powerful son on her own without a man. And there's just something about... And I just got to be honest with you. There's something about this like horny fetish that like white media has... In, in in DC Comics, Marvel Comics, in this series, like, whatever. There's, like, they have, like, this horny fetish for just killing or doing something vile to black men in these shows. Why does the, my daddy gotta be dead? Why can't the dad have his powers and be raising the son who has powers? Now, some people could be say could say, well, wouldn't that take attention off of the boy and put it more on the dad? Maybe, but it depends on how you write it. Maybe he was retired from using his powers. Maybe it was about the son. Maybe he was supposed to, maybe he could have been the son's mentor. They could have done a whole lot of stuff with that. Now, again, I'm not blaming necessarily television producers for that. I mean, that's the way that they wrote it in the comics. I'm just saying that this just seems to be an ongoing thing. And it's, it's kind of annoying to me. Um... Also, I also had some issues with the tone swap of the Nicole character, kind of like a lot of, a lot of other people did with, uh, you know, like the way that she looks. Because if you look at um, Nicole, who was played by Alicia Wainwright, I believe that's her name, she appears to be a mixed black girl. But it's clear that if you look in the comics, she's either a black woman or an Afro-Caribbean black uh, Afro-Caribbean woman. So in other words, either she's a black woman who is, you know, from from the United States or she is an, or she's Afro-Caribbean. It's very clear that that that's the case. Personally, though, this show, I think, would have been much better if it would have had even more of an authentic feel. It just felt like there were black characters who just happened to be there and they were around like white characters and non-black characters so it kind of just felt like it was like one of those like you know um just a just a mixed 
show like you know they were advocating for people of color or something or or marginalized people i would say because you also had esperanza who, and she was white she had a disability i think they were they were trying to like advocate for quote-unquote marginalized people um and that's why they did that because if you think about it i feel like dion if they really wanted to make that story authentic they could have put dion in a class with other black kids there i don't really see any reason why that would have been an issue i don't see an issue uh i don't see a reason why like the, most of the cast couldn't have just been black and that would have just been it because they would have more opportunity and range to just create all these different and authentic like characters even the characters that were in by Bi um biona uh or biona however the hell you say that they weren't they, they weren't black in there the, the the lead scientist chick she was asian and then the other people in there were white so you know i just feel like they were advocating for like like uh like i said uh um marginalized people but I also didn't really like the way that when they actually did add in um, more black characters like that, like that mother um, to the one girl, I can't think of her name, the girl who um, had the powers when they were in season two, when they were in that little, I guess, like uh, the little power uh, protector grid thing when they had the kids that were in there. Um, the mother of that one girl, I cannot think of her name and it, it just frustrates me. But anyway, um, that mother, she was annoying as hell, like the, um, the kind of like brown skin woman. And I think the idea there was they made her a little bit darker complected and they made it seem like she had like, like she was just, uh, almost emotionally unintelligent to be honest with you. And she just couldn't get her shit together. And then Nicole, this mixed black woman was like her guide to a better sense of, of emotional intelligence. I didn't really like that too much. I really didn't. And I, I think really like raising Dion would, would have been a little higher up in my mind had that not happened. Right. It had that not happened in, um, in, in season, in, uh, in season two. Now cloak and dagger, for me, I feel like it was unfinished. I feel like beyond the Louisiana thing and the thing with Ty, I mean, the authentic blackness part wasn't like a, a huge thing. It was more so about like some of Ty, they did show some of Ty's struggles and that was very interesting. Um, I just felt like there was more that I would have liked to see. And I think the idea that um, in this show, she, he's sharing the mantle with a character who is not black already kind of takes the, the bite down on like the blackness factor for me. I thought that it was a good show once again. I just thought that season two, it, although it was okay, it was a little confusing to me. I, like they had the, um, the guy Andre, who, um, who I think his name was Despair. That was his villain name. He, he had a lot of things going on. He was having these headaches and then he was like in the record store playing records and shit. And then he was like, I don't know, like, like controlling an orchestra of people. And then he was doing human trafficking. It was just a lot going on. It was a whole lot going on. And it was a brother, by the way, if y'all didn't see it. And it just, I don't know, something about that just felt weird. Like he had, a, he, this dude that captured Tandy, he was about to traffic her ass and all this other stuff. It just, to me, it was, I don't know, like it, it felt like they were trying to do too much. So I just think if they would have kind of got their writing together and they would have finished it off, I probably would have felt more like hopeful about, you know, my opinions on the show. But I just wanted to give that that clarity right there. Now, let's talk about finally Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Falcon and the Winter Soldier was a pretty good show, but here was my issue. And here's the reason why it's not the best for me. It had a black lead. Sure. But it didn't really have a lot of moments for me that created that that ideal auth black authenticity. And again, this was another show where the black lead shared the spotlight with uh, another white character, that being Bucky in this case. So I want to make sure that I make the point that he was co-starring to a certain extent with him, to a certain extent. Because this was the idea of the aftermath and the way that Sam and Bucky handled their the boy their boy's death, basically. Um, or I said their his death. Captain America didn't die. I'm tripping. His absence because he went back into the into the past to uh, to be with his girl with his selfish ass. Anyway, y'all, let's be real. Y'all know Captain America is selfish as hell. Like, this dude could have did anything when he went back in time. This dude could have went back. He could have stopped slavery. He could have stopped white supremacy. He could have done anything. He could have, hell, he, he could have came to um, fucking 20, what, 20, 20, uh, uh, um, 2020 even. 
And he could have said, you know what, let's give reparations to black people. He could have done all types of shit. And what did this dude do? He went back to go be with his girl in the 40s and shit. That, that's absurd. Like, like he's selfish as shit. And he's supposed to be y'all's hero? Anyway, I could, I could go on about that all day. But the point that I'm trying to make, though, is that um, I feel like, you know, I feel like Sam shared the spotlight, really, with Bucky to a certain extent. Now, he got a little bit more light, in my opinion, but he kind of shared that light a little bit in, in, in certain ways. I think the best moment of the show, really, was the conversation that that Sam had with Isaiah Bradley. And outside of that, and, you know, Sam having issues getting, you know, a, a loan at the bank and all that other stuff, I don't really think that they focus too much on, um, you know, the authenticity of being black in that show too much, which is where I think that it kind of, like, fell short for me. The writing was pretty decent, but I just felt like that was something to consider. It was more about, again, having black faces than it was telling a black story. You, all, I mean, you had the Dora Milaje appearance as well, too, and that was cool and all, but... Um, but like once again, it wasn't really telling an authentic black story for me that just felt like it felt like that was what they were trying to do. Um, even the villain, um, Carly, Carly, whatever the hell her last name was, it begins with an M. She was this, she's a mixed black girl. If you don't know, it's hard to tell because she, she's extremely like, she's like a, like this butterscotch color. Like she's very, very, very light. Like she almost looks white. And she has red hair, so she doesn't appear like she's like she's a black woman, but technically she's a mixed black woman. She had she was basically the leader of this group called the Flag Smashers. And ironically, that's a thing in the show, but she like her mission and the things that she stood for had nothing to do with her black heritage or her black side. So even that didn't really contribute to the idea of black causes because let's say that it was a killmonger situation then i could say well yeah that that's a that's a very legitimate like thing that happened there but like you know that that would contribute to blackness but there was none of that in that show um outside of again his uh, his conversation with isaiah bradley when he went to go get a loan at the bank and the last thing i would say is that speech that he gave at the end but really to be honest all that was basically all that basically just showed was that he was saying i'm gonna keep buck dancing and i'm just gonna buck dance in a good way and everybody listened that's really that was the ideal of the show like at the end when he had that when he gave that big speech and everybody was sitting there listening to him that's really all that really was and think about it, even in that show they killed they killed my man they killed u.s agent's boy he was black they killed him and that's what i'm saying like they're just an obsession in these shows with just killing black men off like they did that there too so anyway luke cage was definitely the best i just wanted to do a breakdown to show you all some of the the things that i like didn't like about these black comic tv shows and um what my rationale was as to why i chose this show as the best out of all of them so that concludes this episode I hope you guys continue to watch the other stuff that I have coming for you. There is going to be a lot more to come, so continue to stay tuned. And um, I'll definitely be talking a little bit more about some of my opinions on sh um, different shows and how I feel about things in the in the, the comic world and and you know things like that. So, like I said, just continue to stay tuned to when I come out with more of these episodes. Anyway, I hope y'all have a good day. I hope you enjoyed the show and I will be talking to all y'all pretty soon. Peace.